In this lecture, we discuss downy mildew of grape. Grape downy mildew is an economically important disease worldwide. In Ohio and other states in the Great Lakes region, downy mildew is one of the major constraints to grape production. The learning outcomes for this lecture are to know the causative agent of grape downy mildew, and you should be able to recognize the signs and symptoms of the disease. You should also be able to, des to describe the disease cycle and the conditions that favor disease development. Downy mildew caused by the Oomycete plasmopara viticola affects both leaves and fruit and is especially serious in climates with abundant rainfall and high relative humidity. Symptoms of downy mildew first appear on the leaves and leaf symptoms are very distinct and easy to recognize in the vineyard. Initially, the lesions are chlorotic, and as disease develops, the lesions turn a grayish brown color. The lesions develop over veins and are irregular in shape. P. viticola spores are produced on the underside of the lesions as shown in the image here. Tufts of grayish white spores are easily seen during cool, wet weather. The sporangia are lemon shaped and form on branched sporangia fours. Understanding the timing of P. viticola berry infections requires some knowledge of berry development. Berry development occurs in two stages as shown in this figure berry formation and berry ripening. The berries begin to develop about 10 days after the caps of the flower drop, which is shown here. Berry size increases exponentially for about a month and then growth slows down as the berries reach varicin, which is right here. Varicin is the stage when the berries begin to turn color and build up sugars. P. viticola can cause infections throughout berry development, but the susceptibility of the berry changes as the berries reach the ripening phase. So it's actually as the berries ripen here and build sugars, they become less susceptible to downy mildew infections. These images show signs and symptoms of downy mildew infections at various stages of berry development. Image A here shows a severe infection of the flowers prior to the flowers opening, which is referred to as the pre-bloom or immediate pre-bloom stage. Images B and D, so here and here, show sporulating infections of the pedicels and figure C shows symptoms of downy mildew on the berries at about four weeks post bloom. So they have this reddish brown color associated with them, but notice that they are not sporulating. Images E and F, so the bottom two here, show sporangiophores emerging from cracks in the berries. In this study, the cracks in the berries were artificially created by making small incisions on the berry surface. And the fact that the, they are sporulating only when they were artificially wounded becomes important as we discuss the disease cycle as well as disease management in future lectures. So in this disease, in this slide, we're gonna cover the disease cycle. And so if we go up to here to the red star is where we'll start. So the disease cycle starts with the oospores, which overwinter in infected leaves on the ground. In the spring, oospores that are embedded in the leaf tissue germinate, and after five to 10 days, depending on the temperature, they produce sporangia. So now we're over here. Sporangia are dispersed by wind and splashing rain. The sporangia produce and release zoospores, which serve as the primary inoculum. 
Zoospores are released when there is free moisture on the tissues. Zoospores then swim towards the stomata and form a germ tube that enters the leaf tissue through a stomate. And so now we're down into this area. The hyphae grows exclusively inside the host tissue and infected leaves are the primary source of spores that induce the fruit infections. At night, when temperatures are above 55 degrees Fahrenheit and relative humidity is high, sporangiophores erupt preferentially through stomata on the lower surface and produce more sporangia. So that's over here. Berries are most susceptible to infections when they are uh, about or up until pea size, but all parts of the fruit cluster remain susceptible until maturity. During warm and dry weather, P. viticola produces O spores in the leaf tissue and the cycle begins again. These O spores can remain dormant for several years in leaf debris on the ground. In warmer regions, such as the southeastern U.S., O spores and mycelia in infected leaves can initiate spring infections. So infections occur when the zoospores reach the stomata and germinate. The efficiency of zoospore germination and invasion through the stomata depends on temperature and light intensity. Percent zoospore germination and host penetration is optimal in the absence of light at temperatures between 15 and 22 degrees Celsius, as shown in the red boxes here. At 30 degrees Celsius, so down here, at 30 degrees Celsius, these three lower graphs, the zoospores do not germinate and light availability is not a factor. So you can see whether it's dark or has low light or has high light, the zoospores are not germinating and thus are not invading the tissue. At 10 degrees up here, so when the temperature is cooler, the zoospores can germinate in the dark and invade the host tissue somewhat, as shown here, but in low light or high light, you, you don't get zoospore germination, nor do you get uh, host invasion. So it's actually during these temperatures of 15, 22, and 20 uh, degrees Celsius in the dark that you have optimal sporulation and host evasion. However, you still do get some sporulation and but very minimal next to no host invasion in low light and full light. So research has consistently shown that clusters are most susceptible one to two weeks pre-bloom to three to five weeks post-bloom, depending on the cultivar. In the study shown here, clusters were inoculated at different time intervals relative to the date of bloom, which is represented here as day zero. In the top graph, disease incidence was calculated as the percentage of clusters with symptomatic berries. Vines that were inoculated 12 days pre-bloom or at bloom had more diseased clusters than those that were inoculated seven or more days post-bloom. So pre-bloom at minus 12 and then bloom at zero, you can see that on all three varieties you get disease um, clusters. However, only on Chardonnay do you have some disease clusters at about seven days uh, post bloom. In the bottom graph, disease severity was measured as the percentage of cluster surface that either sporula supported sporulation or was discolored. 
discolored represented as the dark black bars and sporulation as the light bars. And these data indicate that if infections can occur from seven days pre-bloom, so right here, seven days pre-bloom, to at least 28 days post-bloom, all the way to here, but that berries do not sporulate after 14 days post-bloom, which corresponds to about pea size. So you can see here there was infections, but no sporulation on, on these berries. Research from the same, same study went on to show that berry sporulation stopped about five weeks post-bloom. So up here, this is the time in weeks after inoculation. And this corresponds, this region right here, corresponds to the shaded area on the berry development graph. The lack of berry sporulation is attributed to the conversion of functional stomata into lenticels and to the onset of ontogenic resistance. We will discuss ontogenic resistance in detail when we cover management of downy mildew, black rot, and powdery mildew. Okay, so there are a few key aspects of downy mildew in the disease cycle that must be considered when developing effective management strategies. The first is that sporangia produce zoospores, and it is the zoospores that serve as the primary inoculum. Sporangia can be produced from oospores that overwinter on leaves in the vineyard, or they can blow in on wind-driven rain. The majority of infections occur in the dark when temperatures are between 15 and 22 degrees Celsius. Leaves and berries are susceptible to disease, but berries will not produce new inoculum once the stomata convert to lenticels. Thus, the critical period for infections is from one to two weeks pre-bloom to three to five weeks post-bloom, depending on the variety. And these primary infections are occurring at night or during dark periods. So in the next lecture, we'll cover grape powdery mildew, and we will then recap the three diseases and discuss how these diseases are co-managed.